I'm here with one of my best friends in the universe and wonderful thought leader and colleague, Goodney Gunnarsson. Welcome, Goodney. Thank you, Mark. Good to see you. Thank you for the uh, generous introduction. Yes. Well, it's not finished yet because I want to say a few words to get viewers and listeners caught up about you. So Goodney Gunnarsson is the creator of Glow Motion. And as a physical fitness trainer, Goodney realized the limitation of physical exercises without a personal or mental component. And a lifelong practitioner of yoga, Goodney set out to develop a revolutionary fitness system for mind, body, and soul, which became Glow Motion. Now, as Goodney witnessed the miraculous transformation of not just the body, but the lives of his clients, he realized he had something profound to share with people. So his mission is to help others discover their inner glow and energy, not a small feat, but one that he yeah, is joyous and passionately committed to for over well more than 20 years. Goodney has worked with an international clientele in uncovering deeper levels of well-being, personal achievement, and prosperity. He resides in Reykjavik, Iceland with his wife Gula and speaks around the world. Goodney is also the author of the Icelandic bestseller, Presence is Power and Glow, How to Resonate Prosperity. Good to see you, my friend. Glad you're here. Glad we're doing this. Likewise. It feels great to be doing this with you, Mark. Yeah. And, and you know, we're in the Future of Healing Conference, and, and I'm realizing it might be a good idea to kind of land at ground zero and talk about what health really is and what healing really is. But, you know, before we dive into that, because that's a big one, I'm wondering if you could just say a few words about how you got into the work that you do, really sort of like a mind, body, spirit, fitness trainer that's, um, you know, does transformational work. How did that happen for you? Well, obviously, gradually, step by step, but it's, I would contend that most of us get into the business because we need to heal our own wounds in some way. Mm -hmm. Um you know, my, my, my background, my, my youth was turbulent and uh, my, my parents were addicted to alcohol or uh, well, they were addicted to absence, but they used alcohol to sustain that absence. And, um, and so, you know, at a very young age, I was, I was frightened. I was frightened about becoming the way they were. And one of my early awakenings was at the age of 18, I realized that I was afraid to be or become like they were and I realized that I didn't have to be afraid of becoming like them because I was just a, just exactly like them. <laughs> However, my revelation was that I didn't have to behave the same way. Mm -hmm. And so at that moment I retrieved my energy from being a victim of circumstances to being the creator of my own destiny, meaning that I could define my own future. Gradually, in the process of that, I started doing yoga, physical fitness workouts, breathing exercises, and also looking at my diet. And what, what happened was that in the process of my own development, I started looking at my surroundings and working with other people and realized that most people are coming from wellness or fitness from a, from a base of fear. And, and when you come from something from a base of fear, what you're going to do is exaggerate that fear. Everything you devote your awareness to is going to grow and expand. And I wanted to find ways of, of defining the intention from a different point of view, not to operate from lack and, and scarcity, but to operate from prosperity and, 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 and love. And so I started actually educating myself and running into meeting people like you, going to Kripalo and and seeking education and light wherever I could find it. Mm. And from that, I decided to bring that knowledge to a base of my own, <coughs> excuse me, a system, as you referred to earlier, called Glow Motion. So was there a, a place in your journey where it was an aha for you, or was it a gradual experience? Many times, many, many ahas, and, and still to this, this day, there are ahas. Mm -hmm. And they're based on sometimes a deeper understanding of something I already knew, but somehow wasn't living. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a seasoned life coach, and I work with people more or less all day long. And, and the, only, the only disease that I have come across is the disease 
that occurs if you don't want yourself. So in essence, all of the, the pain and the suffering I've seen with my clients is when they are in a place where they don't want the lives they've created or you know, the physical health they've created or the financial state they've created. And so the resistance and the, the defiance to you personally or me personally is what crosses the separation and the disease. When we love ourselves, we're at ease. So, you know, the language is clear, right? And, and we can talk and speak the language, but are we practicing what we preach? And, and I, I forget myself like, some, somebody, like everybody else does. Uh, you know, my logic is that because I'm quite present, I, I feel the difference between being and not being, so I'm quick to recover myself. But the aha moments, they continue. I mean, and I, I trust they will continue until I, you know, until I leave this body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, aha moments, that's another, that's a whole other topic. It, um, they're such medicine. Um, let's, let's, let's go to the big question. When you think of health, mm -hmm. how are you defining it or describing it in your mind to yourself? Well, to me, health means to be whole, to be, to be in balance, to be at ease, to be, to prosper, not, and to thrive, not to, not to operate our scarcity or, or a diminished expression. So for me, health is about is really about radiating in love. And, and in, in my dialogue, I call it having your glow on, really radiating the essence of what we would call the life force, being a vibrant participant and a co-creator and a, a provider of the fruit of your existence. You basically, what we are is energy transformers. And when I am providing the fruit of my existence, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing my love, I'm I'm sharing my attention, I'm sharing my being, and I'm fulfilling my purpose. If there is a purpose for all of us, the purpose is to be love and to generate and, and share that love with as much generosity as possible. So for me, health is about that vibrancy, about being passionate about what you do and who you are and how you interact with the world. Anything else for me would be, would be holding back or, or not being generous. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it seems that usually when, when people get into the conversation of health, we get into the conversation of, well, you know, numbers maybe. What's your blood pressure? What's your cholesterol level? Oh, they're good. I'm healthy. Um, or we might have certain fitness parameters that say, I'm healthy. Mm. And <laughs> there's a lot of people who have the right numbers uh, yes. and they're not necessarily healthy. <laughs> No, and I, I, it's interesting. I, I, let me interject something here because it's like it has so much to do with the way I, I conduct my language, and that is there is only one disease, and that is a constrained heart. Mm. There's only one reason, which is abandonment, and, and, and by the way, abandonment is rejection, and there is only one remedy, and that's love. So... If there is such a thing as being completely whole, it's about being completely present and therefore loving in the same essence, loving yourself and loving everything else at the same time. And my contention is that love is awareness and love also means allowing yourself and everyone else to be the way they are right now. In essence, when you withdraw judgment and inject love, then everything transforms and illuminates into the process of gratitude. So... For me, health is, is truly about opening my heart and, and allowing myself to receive the prosperity and the love that, that the universe is providing all the time. Mm. You know, it's, 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 it's fascinating. You know, here we are in a conversation about health and we're almost talking, um, I want to say in non-scientific terms, you know, an open heart. Um, probably can't be measured in traditional ways, and yet most of us know when when we have that or we've had it. Yes. Man, does it feel good? You know, yes. wow, do I change? And my metabolism changes at those times. Uh, and when my heart is closed, wow, can I feel it? And it doesn't feel good. No. Um, and, and yet, you know, no amount of, I don't know, eating the right food 
will necessarily make my heart more open. No, it won't. However, nourishing your heart with intention and love will. Mm -hmm. And you can use, obviously, as we know, foods to do that. Now, here's another one. And, and obviously, this is, it's interesting because of the dialogue we had about heart. Uh, the saying is, your heart will never attack you unless you betray it. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? Does it mean that you feed it a hamburger every now and then? Or does it mean that you, you, you reject yourself or abstain from allowing your heart ample space to beat? It's like, how do we open the rib cage? How do we give the lungs and the heart ample space to beat and service the rest of the body? Now, we know, you and I know, that every pulsation that the heart participates in is a signal to the rest of the body to the rest of the cells and to the rest of the universe so the heart is the emperor and health is about radiating that health that that information about how you actually attend to yourself and so all i'm saying is that my contention is being healthy is being loved mm -hmm. you know i'm i'm thinking back to a book that i read um by the late, great Paul Pearsall, he wrote a book called The Heart's Code. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he talked about how patients with heart transplants, and this is all documented, will often take on the personality and memories yes. of the person where the heart came from, even though the new recipient didn't have that life, didn't have that lifestyle They'll start to crave the same foods and literally have memories of that person's life. Yes. Um, it seems like there's a lot more to the heart than we realize. Well, we're starting. There's, a, there's actually an institute called the Heart's, uh, Heart Math. Heart Math, yeah. Uh, yes. And we're starting, and I've been using uh, illustrations and, and diagrams from them for quite some time in my workshops. But we're starting to realize that the energy that the heart is emitting is basically the radio of your own existence. It's like how we transmit our self-worthiness, how we transmit uh, our self-image to a degree, our perspective towards ourselves is then broadcast through the, the amplified uh, currency of the heart. But the same book, I read the same book, and I love that book, and I, I, I will always remember the beginning story of the girl that adopted uh, a heart from someone else. But it's, it, and it's not a pretty story because that girl had been assaulted. Mm -hmm. But the recipient of the heart could actually describe the assailant. Yeah. And that's how he was caught. It's crazy, huh? So it's, it's crazy. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, this is obviously we have to have an open mind, but there's no open mind if the heart's not open. So to me, this leads us to, or naturally leads us to, you know, once we define health a little bit better, uh, there's this thing that we call healing. And yes. so many of us are looking for healing, whether we have a disease, whether we have an unwanted habit, whether we have a nagging symptom. Um, the world seems to revolve around my health and my, my efforts to heal from whatever ails me. How do you, how do you see healing? How do you define healing? Uh, you want the simple term or the expanded term? Sure. <laughs> Both. <laughs> well, to me, healing is extremely simple. The process, the beginning of healing is this. You forgive yourself unequivocally. Mm -hmm. The moment you forgive yourself, you're taking responsibility for your journey and your expression, your energy. It has nothing to do with shame or blame. It has nothing to do with anything except letting go of, of regret and remorse. The moment that happens... You have no need to punish, scold, or um, abuse yourself. The, the general terms for our own existence is based on our own process, what we would call the blueprint of behavior. And subconsciously, we have an account. And that account is what I would call the shame or the love account. So if you hold yourself in contempt for whatever it is, whatever it is if you have... If you have any reason to punish and scold yourself, which most of us seem to have because we're raised in, a, in such a fashion, then most of our energy is devoted to self-pity or to some form of, of 
rejection and abandonment. Mm -hmm. So the moment we forgive ourselves, we become response-able, able to respond. And the moment we become response-able, we retrieve our self-respect. That retrieval is the energy, the source of energy that everything revolves around. It's your chi, it's your life force, it's the love that you actually have, the energy, the awareness you have to invest in whatever creation you deem necessary or, or you want or desire. So the moment you forgive yourself, and you can't forgive other people, you can only forgive yourself. You can forgive yourself, however, and when you do, you take back your energy, your source, your self-respect. That self-respect becomes the framework for our self-image. Mm -hmm. The self-image is we, how we perceive ourselves, our perspective towards ourselves, and how worthy we feel. And if there's such a thing as a disease, it's not feeling worthy. On mm -hmm. some level, it's not feeling worthy of love, not feeling worthy of health or prosperity or the world we live in. Mm -hmm. and, and it's deemed by ourselves. We judge ourselves. It feels like this piece where we're not forgiving ourselves, we don't accept ourselves, or we... It, it seems so much of that these days... Mm -hmm. revolves around a rejection of the body. We, yes. there's, there's so many people who are attacking the body, even with good exercise, <laughs> even with good food, yes. even with dieting. It, it seems like in the fitness universe, in the nutrition universe, in the health universe, it, it's, it's less about, I want to have this healthy, vibrant body because I love health and vibrancy. It feels more like this, this is not okay. This is not good enough. I don't accept this. This is bad. Let me change it. <laughs> well, you asked me about fitness and, and my own healing process. And the reason that I'm actually doing the work I do now is I, I realized that 40 years ago, that people were coming to all these things, changing their potential diets or their fitness uh, routines because they wanted to force themselves to be different. So they're, they're actually applying violence instead of love. Mm -hmm. And my contention has always been you can't change your body with violence or intensity, but you can change it with love and compassion and kindness. And here's something that I can tell you, which is the, the simplicity of transformation. No amount of violence will change anything, but a small dose of intention will change everything. Mm -hmm. The moment you define what you want and feel worthy of obtaining, that's going to change. It's like, for instance, when I work with my clients, I ask them to define, you know, what their body image is. And, and most of them can't. So they've never thought about what their body image looks like. They haven't looked at the frame. They don't even know where the image, their image is hanging and what the image is projecting. So I have them define what that image is. And the moment that happens, they start to change according to their image because that's what they're projecting. Compassion and kindness is, is, is the lecture of that progression, but violence and intensity and fear is what keeps, keeps us from obtaining it. And it seems to me that we keep getting offered, you know, from, from the books or the experts or the culture or, you know, whatever's popular that's out there, it seems like many of the methods to get yes. where you want to go. Yes. They have a little bit of violence in them, if not yeah. a lot. They're sort of tinged with, you're not good enough. But yes. if you do something really extreme, mm -hmm. and you do something that you're not going to like, that's somehow going to get you to like. You're going to yes. like yourself after you do this thing that you don't like. Or maybe Absolutely. even you're going to love yourself if you hate yourself enough. <laughs> Yes. No, it's the old adage, no pain, no gain. Mm -hmm. But it's also the American way of marketing. Mm -hmm. Create the need and then fulfill it. Mm -hmm. So most marketeers are going to say that you're the problem and they have the solution. Mm -hmm. But you're the solution. You're not the problem. Mm -hmm. But if you bite into or buy into the fact that somebody else has a solution for you, you victimized yourself and abandoned yourself. So the whole process, for instance, my dialogue is called Presence is Power. The moment you're present, you've retrieved your power, and from there you can sustain an ability of creation. You become a defined conscious creator. If you're not there, you're just an accidental uh, calamity, mm -hmm. in essence. 
because you're, you're refusing to become responsible for your energy. And when I say responsible, uh, there's no blame, there's no attachment. It's only, it only means the ability to respond versus being reactive, impulsive, compulsive. At some point, we have to awaken to that, that we are co-creators of this universe, but we're prime creators of our existence and our own expression. And the moment we change our perspective towards ourselves, everything changes. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that when it comes to this word called responsibility, particularly as it relates to health, yes, um, those are two hard words for a lot of people to really put together in a healthy way. And what I mean is, it seems like we're taught that, you know, your health is in the hands of that person, that expert, this doctor, and they know a heck of a lot more than we do. Um, mm. You know, especially if you're in a, in a dire circumstance, you know, I can't operate on my own body. Uh, I can't do surgery on my own self. So there's a place where we're taught like, wow, you have to totally give it up and surrender mm. into the hands of another when it comes to health and healing. And yet I think it's that belief that holds a lot of people back. We're almost afraid to be responsible for my health. Mm -hmm. Well, and I understand the dilemma. I mean, we're all, we all come from the same cloth in one way or another. And uh, the point is, and, 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 and there's a limit to what's you're, what you're supposed to say about responsibility. It's like there's a medical profession out there that is superior to what we know about our own bodies, right? So, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm not against uh, uh, traditional medicine by any means. And I think all of this, all of this dialogue should, should uh, uh, belong in the same, in the same uh, space. But we have to become responsible for the way we operate our lives and our being, just like we must be responsible for the companies we run. So, for instance, if your company is, is, is in the red uh, and, and, and you're about to go bankrupt, uh, the question is, who's responsible for how the company was run? What kind of a vision was that company is servicing? What's the intent? How do you define what the company's process is about? And, and if, it's, if, if the business is being run poorly, you may call an accountant or some expert to teach you how to run the company. But initially, if you've been running the company, we know that you're responsible for how the company was operated. Mm -hmm. Why is that different with the body? What's the difference between running a body as a company, as a, a, a one carbon unit that emits light and needs to have purpose and needs to bear fruit to be able to be productive and, 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 and uh, healthy, in essence. Is there a difference? You know, I think there's a certain level of trust that we need to feel responsible for the body because there's things that happen to my body. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how to heal this. I don't know how to fix this. I need help. Right. But I have a certain amount of trust that I can find that. That, yes. I'll, that I'll see a way through, that it'll become apparent to me at some point if I ask the right questions. And if I really look and listen, then I'll be able to, you know, find the right path for me to take to help myself, which is different than people becoming afraid that they don't have the knowledge. So just going to anyone that says, oh, I have this knowledge. Mm. And if we're looking for that knowledge out of fear, like, oh, my God, if I don't find this, I'm screwed. Um, we tend to make poor choices, I think, from that place. Right. We, the, the poor choices are interesting because a choice is a consequence. And so, and I, and I understand that and I, I completely agree with you. But all of this is about trust. Mm -hmm. And trust means to have faith. And in order to have trust and faith, you have to trust yourself and you have to have faith in you. So your faith can never be extended outside of you. It doesn't happen that way. Just like you can't give what you don't have. And if you don't love yourself, you can't love another, although you may pretend. Mm -hmm. So in essence, we can only receive according to what we feel worthy of. So what I'm talking about is, is operating from the, the general terms of integrity and honesty, where you realize that, that you are an energy source, you are the creator. 
you are uh, an awareness, which is your primary asset, and how you invest or devote that awareness is going to have consequences in your life. But if you're not responsible for it, if you don't want to be responsible for how you invest or devote that energy, then what you've done is you've abandoned yourself. So the responsibility is step number two. Step number three then becomes defining what you're going to do with your energy, how, what purpose you're going to sustain, because your purpose is your journey. It's the reason why you're here. Step number four is commitment, committing to yourself. Now, are we committed to ourselves? If we were, we wouldn't be abandoning and rejecting ourselves. The moment one commits to oneself, the universe takes us seriously and starts really supplying the energy for us to sustain our intentions. So the point that I'm making is if there is such a disease, it would be what we would call separation from the moment, from the now, from the, from, from the primal source, whatever you, however you define that. And when I'm talking about faith, I'm obviously not talking about religion. I'm talking about true faith, mm-hmm. the faith of your own heart, the knowledge that you are there for yourself. Because we're talking about fear and insecurity. What do we have to fear if not ourselves? Mm-hmm. Well, I think the big fear is death. It's disease. Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. you know, that like those might be the big ones. You know, lesser is I'm not going to be okay. I'm not going to have enough. Right. I'm not going to be loved. So let me change my body. <laughs> right, right, <Yeah>. right. But, <laughs> but, but both of us agree that if you trust yourself, that fear is eliminated. Yeah. So in, in, in essence, what does it take for us to sustain that kind of trust, that kind of faith? And my contention is that you have to keep your word. For instance, you know, the word discipline. Most of us think that discipline means some form of hardship. But the word discipline means to tell the truth, to be a disciple of your word. That's all it really means. So if we keep our word, if we, if we love ourselves, if we behave ourselves towards ourselves with the compassion and kindness, all of a sudden we've cultivated a different relationship which stipulates trust and, and compassion and kindness. And I can promise you, that in that state, your fear is diminished, completely diminished. And fear is the ultimate disease. And the only thing we have to fear is the illusion of fear. Again, this comes back to us. We're the generators of the faith we hold, or we're the generators of the fear we hold. And so both of these aspects are perspectives. Do we believe that the world is a friendly place or do we believe that it's an unfriendly place? Now, just that perspective is going to rule your health. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fascinating because just on basic observation, um, the world seems to be everything. (laughs) Whatever you can imagine it to be, um, there are horrors being committed in the world as we speak. There's amazing loving acts being committed as we speak, and it all seems to be true (laughs) or not true in any given moment. Yes. Well, this is, the world is an incredible place, and the perception of horror, and by, by saying this, I'm not by any means sanctifying anything that's being done that's violent. The process is, again, because we're talking about perspectives, do we believe that there's only one life or do we believe that it's an existing process, that we don't actually die? We, 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 what we do is, is we regenerate our being, our spirit, our source in another body. And so in order to make sense of the world, I don't think we can look at what's happening just now. I think we have to look at it as a whole, just like the, the, the cells in our body. Are they... Are they are they subjected to horrors as they die off? Mm-hmm. These are perspectives. And, and I, I, you know, when you were talking about the horrors, I was thinking about the news that I was listening to about what's going on in the Middle East. And immediately my heart sort of, yeah, I could feel an extra, extra beat. And so the only thing that I can do to all of that is to open my heart and, and emit an energy of support to whatever is going on in the world because we as a, soul, as a culture, no matter what faith we hold, we're co, 
collaborating the, the, the state of the universe, the planet. And if we want things to change, we must be the change. We must love ourselves. At the same time, that happens immediately. We have love for others and for the planet and for the suffering that's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want to return for a moment to this piece about um, connecting this back to the body. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think it's true that there's a fundamental place where we probably know in ourselves that we're the change. Yes. But somehow that signal gets distorted a little bit. Um, mm. And I'm the change and I can be the change that I want to see in the world gets distorted to I've got to change myself in the following way. Um, so I'll be loved and accepted. Mm. Uh, or you have to change in the following yes. way. So I could love myself or I can love you. It, it, mm. it's, it, it's love seems to be a, a, um, a very conditional act when it comes to one's own body or even the bodies of others and i'm and i'm wondering you know for you what 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 love has to do with it here well the the everything it, well you can make anything conditional but what comes first the egg or the hen it's mm -hmm. like is it is it if we look at it potentially as if i want change in my life am i going to withhold love in my life until i make the changes or am i going to love myself and change so when I talked about healing, the most powerful remedy I've ever been acquainted to is love. And the precursor of love for me is forgiveness, personal forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And it always comes back to, for instance, with my clients, when the only way I can help them heal is for them to retrieve their energy. If you're out of energy, if you've expanded your energy uh, through rejection, through abandonment, through whatever, then... If you want to heal, you have to retrieve that energy, your source, your light, your prana, your life force, your love. The moment you forgive yourself, that energy is back in your presence. Mm -hmm. That becomes the source of your healing. Without that, that energy, it's like an empty battery. And, and so the, the, the most important aspect of that healing, based on what we said about the body, do we have to fix the body to love ourselves? Do we have to love ourselves to fix the body? To me, it's so apparent, and I've seen it happen so many times. The moment people are willing to forgive themselves, and people will tell me they don't know how to, and I'll tell them that's not true. They don't want to because they're addicted to the pain or the consequences of their behavior. And addiction is an interesting process, and there's only one addiction, according to me, and, and that is absence, to be absent. And you can use anything to sustain that absence. And so the mind is such a strange anomaly. And so the point that I'm making is that we become subjected to our patterns of behavior. We call them habits. But they can also be turned into rituals, conscious rituals that we initiate and then we practice and they become until they become who we are or the expression of who we are. But... The, the beginning is not the awakening. The beginning, in essence, is well, awakening awareness is the key to transformation. But if you're not willing to take responsibility for that energy, the light that you are and the light you emit, then you can't sustain that awakening. So when I say presence is power, then my contention is that you have become present, responsible, and therefore empowered. And the moment that happens, your healing starts, and it's a profound change, and it's immediate. You see it. The energy's back. The light's back. The vibra vibration is back. The vibrancy's back. And yes, people may lose it again, but you can see it like a light bulb being turned on. Mm -hmm. And it's the energy of the universe, what we call chi. It's like I say to people, awareness isn't, isn't the, the, the bulb or the... Or the, or, or the ceiling, it's just the light. And everybody agrees. And I say, but what happens when you take the energy away from the light? When you take the electricity away? When you take the life force? When you take the enthusiasm? So to me, and you know, with all of the clients that I've worked with, whether it's been financial, physical, emotional, or mental, the moment they forgive themselves, then their lights turn back on. Mm -hmm. And in that light, anything's possible. Mm 
mm-hmm. anything. It, it's interesting when I think about forgiving oneself. You know, mm-hmm. I think sometimes people have it in their minds why they're so bad <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, that they deserve judgment, <laughs> um, why they're so bad that they don't deserve forgiveness. And, and oftentimes it seems like humans walk around with this vague sense of I can't forgive myself, but there's not necessarily a crime that's obvious <laughs> mm-hmm. to what it is I've done wrong. Yes. Um, I, I'm, I'm just wondering if you can comment on that. Well, I, I, I would love to because forgiveness is such a misunderstood concept. You can't forgive your past because it doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. You can't forgive your future because that doesn't exist either. But you can forgive yourself in the now. And that's all forgiveness means. Forgiveness just means letting go of rejection and inducing love. It means becoming present. It means retrieving your energy, letting go of remorse and, re- and, 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 and uh, re- rejection, in essence. It means basically becoming present and responsible. That's all it means. In that moment of responsibility, you can choose to direct the energy, the life force, in a completely different pathway. So here's an example. Parachute uh, trainees, you know, they're told when you jump out of the plane, you know, fix the spot where you're going to land. Don't think about the wires. Don't think about the, the mud or the puddles. But because they're so afraid and so preoccupied with what they're doing, they're going to react impulsively. And all they're going to think about is what they don't want, which is the, the wires and the, drudd- and the puddles, instead of what they do want. So being present allows you to make those distinctions and, and focus your energy to what you want. The same knowledge goes this way. I say to my clients, everything that you devote your awareness to grows and expands. And they say yes. And then I say that you also must contend to the fact that if you're thinking about what you don't want, you want it. Mm -hmm. And then then all of a sudden they become very serious and everything is very bleak. And I said, well, just acknowledge that to begin with because there's a consequence to how you devote your energy. So... The aspect of forgiveness, which is so beautiful, it, that it only means that in that moment you say, I'm going to love myself instead of reject myself. I'm going to let go of the rejection and open my heart. And in that space, everything transforms. Yes, it's a practice, and you have to do it. Remember the old prayer, Ho'oponopono? Mm-hmm. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. It works. It calls you back. It calls your spirit back. And once your spirit's back, everything is possible. So forgiveness is a very misunderstood concept. And obviously, it's been used by our parents. It's been used by the religious uh, or religion. And, and you know, you were able to go to church and, and have or, or buy, ops, uh, you know, buy uh, your forgiveness or being absolved. And, uh, and, and what I'm saying is that you really can't forgive somebody else. Mm-hmm. You can't really, what, what's the word I'm looking for? You can't relieve someone else, can you? You have to go to the bathroom yourself. You yourself have to let go of the rejection and the abandonment and the shaming and the scolding. So I know we haven't talked a great deal about the seven steps, but my contention is that everything is based on your permission, your allowance for love, your prosperity. Because I know people that have been able to attract a lot of energy and a lot of love into their lives, but they... They can't sustain it and they can't receive it because they don't feel worthy of it. Mm. So health and vibrancy is about being worthy, about feeling good about yourself, about allowing your heart and trusting your heart. Again, we get back to the fear. People that win large lottery tickets, what they do is attract a lot of money and they can't handle it. They can't receive it. So most of them burn up that money very quickly. I think it's about 97% of the people that are recipients of large uh, lottery tickets, they leave a hole larger than they had before. Mm-hmm. You know, so we're always talking about our ability to receive love, aren't we? Yeah. So then, if, if that's true, then disease is based on our ability or disability to receive love or ease, for that matter. Mm-hmm. Well, 
I'm glad it all boils down to love. I think that's uh, <laughs> I think that's probably a great place to put the exclamation point right now. And and I know we're scratching the surface here. I want to think of this conversation as a as a beginning, um, as opposed to a complete whole that that has a clear ending. And I I, I would just love for you to share with you know, viewers and listeners, how they can stay in touch with you, your world, how could they learn more about what you're up to and what you do? Thank you, Mark. Uh, my websites are presenceispower.com, also Glow Motion, G-L-O, Motion, no W. And uh, I have a book coming out in, uh, in April, April 7th. Uh, it's actually available already on Amazon. Uh, but it doesn't matter because the conference is ahead of time, right? Right. So but, this is this is coming out in June. So your book is out. Let's just say oh, it's the book out. is out and yes. a bestseller already. All right. <laughs> so so, but in the book, uh, the, there is the dialogue that we are in right now, and there's a seven step progression that is is very powerful in the framework for for the work I do as a life coach, and uh, uh, but. In the meantime, I mean, and, and, and if people don't want to buy the book, they can go to either website and retrieve a lot of the information about the seven steps. And if they go to my websites, they can also download a document called Vision Work that will get them acquainted with this dialogue and, and be very, very helpful. So there are various ways of staying in touch with me. And, uh, but mostly the best way is Go Motion. Obviously, Facebook, all the social media. And, uh, and, uh, but Presence is Power would probably be the clearest way. Great, my friend. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing your experience and your wisdom in such a beautiful way, in such a present and powerful way. Uh, I really appreciate it. I appreciate you. Mark, you draw it out in me. Thank you, my friend. All right. And I look forward to the next one. Same here. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I'm Mark David.